Morning, Your Honor. Here on Ms. Gardner's case, the state has provided discovery to Mr. Baez this morning. Um, and I think we're just going to ask for a past date. Yes, uh, we have received the discovery, and uh, which consists of a thumb drive, and in addition to that, and um, a uh, external hard drive as well. Uh, of course, we haven't reviewed the contents of it. There is one thing I think that the court should be aware of um, since we had the issue, the next point issue come up. It was, it was immediately shut down, so we were not, we did not have access to, to further discovery post the, the date of it being shut down. What is that date? I believe it was November 15th, Your Honor. Okay. So it, essentially, we try to get through as much as we could, and that's just basically to give uh, the court uh, an idea of where we're at in the, in the discovery review. Not that I think the court thought we would go through all of it in this time, but um, just there, there was a hard stop date is basically all I can say. Uh, but fortunately, we'll be able to take this back and start up again. Okay, so it's today that you got the external hard drive? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then I've also, um, I've been handed a form titled Unlimited Waiver Speedy Trial. Um, have you gone over this with your client? Yes, we have. Okay, if you could please place Ms. Gardner under oath. I do. I do. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I've been handed a form that's titled Unlimited Waiver Speedy Trial. Have you gone over this form with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and it has your signature on it. Did you sign it indicating that you have, in fact, gone over this with your lawyer? Yes, Your Honor. The form indicates um, that you've reviewed both the advantages and disadvantages of waiving, waiving speedy trial. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and has anyone threatened you or coerced you to get you to waive speedy trial? No, ma'am. Promised you anything? No, ma'am. Okay. I will find that the waiver of speedy trial is freely and voluntarily entered. Um, I'm signing the form now. Um, Due to some of the, the amount of discovery and uh, the additional issue in the Fernandez case, my intent is to place this case um, at the last week of January um, so that I can um, have the hearings necessary in the Fernandez case. So we discussed in chambers the February 2nd date. Is, is that clear for all sides? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, then we'll use that date and I'll come back um, for pretrial. So it'll be February 2nd, that's a Friday, 9 a.m., and that's for pretrial. Okay, so anything else we need yes, to take up? The defense filed a motion, a docket line 38. The state has no opposition to that motion for grand jury testimony. Yes. Thank you. All right, based on the motion and it's unopposed, the court is gonna sign the order granting defendant's motion to disclose uh, grand jury testimony. All right, thank you for that reminder. Anything else? Not from the state, Your Honor. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Number nine, Mario Fernandez Zaldana. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, my name is Jesse Dreiser. I represent Mr. Fernandez. I'm here with my co-counsel, Mr. Hill, and lead death penalty counsel, Mr. Tassoni. Uh,
from a housekeeping perspective, uh, we also, given the next point issues, we brought uh, the state this morning a 10 terabyte uh, external drive so that they could download as much as 10 terabytes of data that they can onto that hard drive so that we don't need to use next point anymore. Uh, we have downloaded some discovery, so it's not as if we've been in a total standstill since the filing of our motion, which shut down next point. Uh, but I don't know how long that will take uh, for them to get everything uploaded onto that, but I assume uh, in short order. Uh, in addition, they did hand us a thumb drive of ATF records this morning, which we haven't reviewed, uh, but it was given to us uh, prior to court this morning. And then in addition, I, I believe there's a number of terabytes of poll camera footage that was downloaded onto an external hard drive that uh, I believe, if I understood the state correctly, took like a month to download onto this external. So it was handed to Mr. Baez uh, and myself and both of our teams and with the idea of review it, trade it off, figure out a way to download it. And Mr. Baez uh, and I agreed that we would do that. I have it in my possession now. And I'll try to figure out a way to get him a copy or just hand that over to him in short it, whenever we've had a chance to review it. Okay. And then um, the defense has, on Mr. Fernandez's behalf, filed a motion to disqualify um, the Fourth Judicial Circuit, Office of the State Attorney, um, related to some matters on that next point, correct? Yes, ma'am, we have. All right, We've and then the state's response as well. The state um, has recently filed, which this court has reviewed um, the defense motion, in addition to the state's response to that motion. Um, and if you all, my understanding is there is an agreement related to a number of the emails um, that the state is conceding that that would be attorney-client privilege. Yes, Your Honor, in our written response and conversations with Mr. Dreiser and Your Honor in Chambers, there are emails he's referenced. We concede those are attorney-client privileged emails. The state has not reviewed them. Law enforcement has not reviewed them. I provided Mr. Dreiser this morning with reports from Next Point showing that those emails were never read, opened, or accessed by anyone from the state attorney's office or law enforcement. Additionally, I provided him a report from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Computer Forensics Investigation Unit. They did a forensic examination of the Jacksonville Beach Police Department computer. That report also indicates that the email folder that contains those privileged documents was never opened, accessed, or read by anyone in law enforcement on the state attorney's office. You can see their privilege. Our position is we did not read them. All right. But there is, there's one contested document, correct? Or one contested sure. document that the defense is saying it was attached to an email, correct? Yes. But to respond, they may have provided that information to us this morning. We haven't reviewed any of that. That those emails that they concede are attorney-client privilege were uploaded to Next Point by the state's own admission. They have been uh, able to be accessed at a minimum by anyone at Next Point, by law enforcement, and by the state attorney's office. I'm not prepared to respond today as to whether anyone saw it or didn't see it. I, I don't know that. Uh, but to answer your, your question, yes, there's one document that they intend on using, but, uh, that they've read and they've reviewed. And, and the court uh, and defense and the state discussed in chambers this morning. And I think that's what is really the crux of what the next step is gonna be. Okay. Um, so you're gonna take time to review what they've given you this morning? Yes, and then uh, I would like to come back in short order perhaps next week and, and respond to what we discussed previously as to whether or not uh, an independent or neutral magistrate uh, appointed by the chief judge should have a hearing as to whether the one document they do intend on using is a privileged and work product communication. Okay. And so, and just for the record, I, I want to put this court's reasoning um, on the record. for So the court offered, um, and Mr. Fernandez, you should know, okay, um, that this court 
uh, takes the privilege um, that you have between your attorneys extremely seriously, all right? Um, that is a veil that cannot ever be lifted unless and until you decide, okay? Um, so this is the offer that I have told um, both the state and your lawyers, and I'm telling you directly um, that the offer from this court is a layered approach um, to shield this court from any information that I am not entitled to. Um, so the offer to your attorneys is for this court to refer um, just the in-camera review of the contested information slash documents. Um, my understanding is the state is conceding a number of those. However, there's one document that I have no knowledge of, okay? I can keep it that way by um, having the chief judge appoint a independent circuit judge to conduct the in-camera hearing um, the way in which that judge would see fit. I would then would get an order based on that hearing from that court, and I would conduct the hearing of the disqualification, accepting the findings of whether that is in fact attorney-client privilege or not without this court receiving the information that is contained within that document. Um, therefore, shielding this court from any uh, potential of information that I'm not entitled to. Okay, so you can hear it directly from me. Your attorneys will discuss it with you further. Um, and based on, I guess, the new information that's been provided to you this morning, additionally, um, maybe it changes your position, maybe it doesn't. Um, and then you all can talk about it, whether um, the defense feels comfortable agreeing that I would just conduct the hearing on the disqualification without the in-camera review, or if you're requesting an in-camera review, that would be this court's um, course of action, essentially, like if you wanted to have someone independent. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am, which very may well be dispositive as to whether the second your hearing of disqualification would even take place, depending on what the court, the independent uh, circuit court judge found. I mean, I can see. I don't think it dispenses with the issue that you brought um, because it's an access issue at that point in time. I could conduct that without, I could conduct that portion without getting into the substance in which I don't, I want to avoid getting into the substance of something I may or may not sure. be able to, but I think the issues raised, it has to be of record, it has to be litigated because you're asking for that remedy. Um, the, the 66 emails, I don't think that one document necessarily is dispositive of the hearing that I would conduct, okay. is my understanding, because you all are still alleging that they, it's uploaded into some cloud. So um, what I'm trying to resolve is what you all can't agree on without me having access to information that I'm not entitled to. Understood. All right, so I will see you all back December 11th, 9 a.m. for pretrial. Um, that'll give both sides um, time to review slash talk, see if it changes any position on either side. Um, and you can let me know where you want to go from there. And Mr. Honor, that's all we have today. May we be excused? Yes. Thank you. Have a all right, day. see you Monday. Um, well, next Monday. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.